Hey everyone, it's Aaron here. Just gonna preface this video by saying that I'm not making a response to Mayo's response, responding to the Ultra Kill responses, which were responding to his original Ultra Kill reviews. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know about the drama, things have gotten quite crazy. Additionally, this isn't supposed to be a dissection of any particular takes he has on anything. Many peeps out there have already done so, and I don't think I have anything to add to what's already been said in that regard. This is more so of a small discussion on why I feel Mayo's style of reviewing has ended up creating such huge rifts between himself and the communities surrounding the games he looks at. Furthermore, I'll be using Ultra Kill as the basis for this topic, since it's what I'm most familiar with, both in my personal experience and in regards to his content. But, I believe it's safe to say that if this applies to the Ultra Kill side of things, then it would only be natural for it to apply to his other discussions on games, such as Halo, Devil May Cry, etc etc. Do feel free to tell me what you think on the topic as well. Anyhow, for me at least, I think the main aspect of his reviews that causes such division is how upfront he'll be with what he wants for a game. Of course, there is absolutely nothing wrong with expressing those desires and opinions. Who is in their right place to stop anyone from doing so, right? As far as I can tell, most people out there don't disagree with this idea. Hence why so many of Mayo's videos have led to extended discussions between multiple channels and himself, and these usually result with some very interesting takeaways aside from a lot of the toxicity that has arisen on either ends of the communities. Furthermore, nobody wants to promote changes to make things worse, and Mayo promotes his ideas for the purpose of bettering the games he talks about through the lens of one particular design philosophy. I'll touch more on that later, as this is a key component to what leads to all the controversy. Either way, a majority of the time, Mayo in fact enjoys the games he takes a look at, and who wouldn't want the game they're enjoying to become more in line with something they'd enjoy even more? However, reviews are basically unsolicited critiques of a person's work, and that's especially the case with this side of the YouTube landscape. The reason why the whole thing is a problem in not just games, but literally any form of entertainment, is due to the fact that there will always be two sides of the same coin. If something works for some people, it is inevitable that it won't work for others. Plain and simple. At the end of the day, a review is just an opinion piece on whether said thing worked for you or not. And, most of the time, it's not wrong to say that the games Mayo talks about satisfy the vast majority of players, Ultra Kill being the main example. And that's where a lot of distaste for Mayo's content comes from. To many, it seems as if he's just being nitpicky or, at worst, a contrarian. Yet, I think the real contributing factor lies a little deeper than this. Challenge is a driving factor when it comes to games engaging you in their systems, mechanics, and overall gameplay. This is a design philosophy that Mayo really appreciates in video games. Obviously, this isn't the case for games like Minecraft, Animal Crossing, etc etc, where it's quite clear that this particular take on game design would heavily clash with their intended purposes, but Mayo doesn't talk about those games. Mayo does, in fact, talk about Ultra Kill three times at that. Now, this is where things start getting dicey. You see, one could argue that Ultra Kill is a game that could fit into this design philosophy. In Mayo's attempts to have Ultra Kill achieve this better, I believe that he's crossed over from the territory of unsolicited critique to unsolicited input. For instance, Ultra Kill is a game that gives you infinite ammunition. However, Mayo believes that infinite ammo causes Ultra Kill to become less challenging, particularly due to his experience where he's able to play a lot of the first act using only the starting revolver, therefore potentially stopping players from interacting with the other weaponry and fun mechanics of the game. Whether you agree with this notion or not doesn't really matter. It's the change he advocates for that really heats things up. Mayo believes that, in one form or another, having ammunition be limited to promote more weapon switching would make the game more challenging and force players into utilizing the game's arsenal more. 
Funnily enough, Ultra Kill's developer Hakita has done this already with the nail guns. Yet, why didn't Hakita make every weapon in the game have some form of limit to their ammo count outside of cooldowns and reloads, if not for the fact that unlimited ammo is a part of his vision for the game? And this is where I'm getting at. It's not the case for everyone, of course, but it's easier for people to stomach unsolicited critique for any form of entertainment because it's just an opinion when it comes down to it. It only affects or reaffirms the people a game, movie, or a piece of literature does not or will not work for, while the people who already enjoy or will enjoy said mediums can receive and continue receiving what they want without worrying about interference. Unsolicited input, on the other hand, asks for so much more involvement from all sides of the story. In particular, although a lot of the changes Mayo puts forth may very well make the game a better experience for himself and others who experience games like him, it unfortunately has the chance of not only disrupting the enjoyment of those who love the game's current state, it most importantly interferes with the vision that Hakita has for the game's development. I say most importantly because Hakita isn't adverse to upsetting the fans of Ultra Kill with making changes that meet his vision. There was quite a bit of uproar over his decision to nerf Ultra Kill's grappling hook, yet he still went through with it as that's what he wanted for the game. Overall, that's all I really have to say on the topic. To be frank, all of Mayo's videos are but the sharing of opinions at the end of the day. I honestly think Mayo's videos make for some great entertainment, as his opinions on things spawn a lot of interesting discussions, for better or worse. There really is no reason to fret about his takes. It's not like he's the biggest and only reviewer in the world. When it comes to making a decision on whether you'll like a game or not, you're supposed to be watching more than one person anyway. At least regarding Ultra Kill, Hakita himself says, there's plenty of people with all kinds of opinions on the game, one of them having a microphone and editing software doesn't make their opinion any more special than anyone else's. On that note, thanks for watching and take care.